This video is uh, to talk about how I will support an ESOL student in an uh, inclusionary classroom. Uh, the first thing I would do is, uh, especially if the student has little, little or no English, would be concerned about um, uh, his social, emotional, or his effective domain. Uh, in the ESOL strategies, we learned that if a student is very nervous or scared, uh, that it will actually uh, prohibit uh, their, their learning. So um, it would be important for me to use uh, a lot of uh, facial expressions and body language that conveys a sense of warmth and uh, a sense of uh, happiness and positive and uh, so that the student begins to feel accepted and um, valued in the classroom right away. After establishing this, it would be important to uh, make sure that uh, I don't push the child to uh, speak uh, because a lot of them, especially if they're first learning, uh, go through kind of a silent period, but yet to provide opportunities. So maybe, you know, listening to, um, as a group, get the whole class to do some songs where we put it on the big screen and maybe have some motions and uh, uh, simple uh, lyrics uh, that uh, where the child could take part, uh, but yet not feel isolated like they're having to say it all by themselves. And uh, by doing repetition of the same simple songs like a hello song or a good morning song or a goodbye song, um, even simple phonics songs where they're doing some learning um, and at the same time they're getting a chance to experience the language without uh, being put on the spot. Also, uh, if I was lucky enough to uh, have another child in that class from the same uh, 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 background, uh, then I would try to buddy them up. Maybe uh, I would be lucky enough to have another child speak the same home language, which uh, could really help uh, make the new child feel at ease um, because uh, maybe a little bit of translation could be going on, um, those kinds of things. Um, there's many ways to support the second language learner, and of course, uh, I would assume that there would be uh, an ESOL specialist or um, somebody to confer with to make sure that we know exactly where this child is and what are the best ways to go about supporting them and it would be important to uh, work um, cohesively uh, with the specialist coming in from time to time. You know I found that uh, uh, through ESOL you know like I said if um, you're providing always speaking in a nice like good morning and nice to see you yeah. I'm fine, how are you? Things like that, that little by little they will want to respond back. Uh, once again, it's important to do it in such a way that they don't feel put on the spot, not in front of the group, but just little by little. Um, uh, in a one-on-one -on -one situation, they feel much more comfortable. It would be important to find those opportunities when I could work individually uh, with the student um, to, to uh, encourage those types of uh, simple communications. Um, as far as um, the home culture, I think it would be important within the first uh, week at least to uh, have the parents in, um, to speak with the parents, um, to talk about um, ways to promote language growth at home. Um, it's very important that um, as parents are wanting their child to learn a second language that they're not pushing their child to also try to speak in that second language at home. Uh, the child needs the opportunity to continue to grow in their first language so that their, their language skills keeps expanding because the more they know in the first language the more they'll be able to acquire in their second language. Um, many times parents think, oh, I have my child now in an uh, English-speaking environment, so I want them to speak English at home. But that can work in reverse in creating a sense to the child that they feel like they're always having to be pushed at school and at home to speak in a second language and they don't feel comfortable with it. Um, it would be important for me to uh, speak with the parents to help them to understand that it's okay to continue to speak their home language at home uh, and that we will support the growth uh, in English at school. Uh, a lot of times when a child is immersed into a second language, uh, their brain is spending maximum amount of energy trying to uh, figure out what is being said, even in just simple conversations. Everything is going on around them. They're understanding very little. 
So they need an opportunity to relax their brain and just have normal functionings at home. And speaking with their parents in their native language is a much easier way uh, to reduce the stress uh, on the child and then allow them to enjoy the learning of the second language at school. Uh, so um, I think it's important that uh, the parents um, are able to understand that um, and it's provided to them in such a way that they realize the benefit of you know, uh, pr promoting the first language growth at home while we're uh, promoting the second language growth at school. It has to be a balance. Um, and uh, I, I, so I believe that, you know, between supporting the home culture and encouraging them to continue with that, at the same time, uh, looking to developing a, a very tight uh, relationship with the student at school will promote the language growth. Uh, and then, um, you know, we have to meet them where they're at. Uh, if they know a little, we can see where they're at and start to add little by little by little. We use a term called I plus one. I am here, let's add plus one. And then don't set the expectations so high that they feel like they're never being successful. Uh, I believe success builds success. So therefore, if we, as a teacher, if I find ways to provide opportunities for the child to experience a little bit of success in the second language, uh, then that will um, motivate them to continue to put forth effort. Motivation is big um, and a lot of great job, you're doing excellent, very good, high five, things like that, even for the smallest little steps is hugely, hugely important. You know, when we get within a few weeks, when we get to the point where the child is saying good morning to us first rather than us saying it to them and expecting them to say it back. That's a huge first step. And then being recognized for doing that um, can give them really a, a strong sense of accomplishment. Um, so, you know, it's back to that thinking about that effective domain or that social emotional domain. When they feel better about themselves, they feel better about their learning, they feel like they belong and that uh, they're valued and they're respected, even though maybe their English is lower than everybody else, then that promotes growth and that, you know, they, they feel like they, they, they can get it, that they can do it. And, um, and that motivates them. Uh, what we don't want is to, you know, be constantly put it, uh, needling and pushing them, repeat after me, say, say, repeat after me. Mm, because just like us as adults, if we're being push, 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 our tendency is to push back. Uh, and we don't want that because then we can actually inhibit their ability and increase the stress and increase the pressure. And next thing you know, they will hate learning in English. They will hate coming to school. And, um, and, and then we're fighting a losing battle. So the key is to, to, for everything to be a positive so that you know they're excited to come to school and they're excited for what little bit they will gain in English each day. Obviously, the younger the child is uh, being immersed in a second language environment, the quicker they will pick it up. So all of this will depend on exactly at what age that they are and the amount of support that they will need. And that's how uh, I would support a uh, ESOL student coming into a, a mainstream classroom uh, to promote uh, language growth. Thank you.